Hi everyone, welcome back to another basic PHP tutorial. This time I'm going to be covering a little bit about databases. Um, I'm going to set one up and we're going to do the very basic of pulling information from the database. Uh, we're going to get more into this in our application. We're going to get into some inserts and updating records um, and all those things in uh, our hands-on uh, application. So we're going to get started. I'm going to go into my XAMPP here and I'm going to go under PHP My Admin. And I am going to create a new database. I am going to call this one PHP Basic. And I am going to create that database. So we have a database set up and I'm going to create a new table and call it Users. And I am going to create six fields, click on go, and that's going to set my basic uh, piece up for my table. Um, I'm not going to go too far into what a database is, I'm just going to go through setting it, setting it up. Uh, so if you want to learn more about databases, I may do another video in the future, otherwise um, if I haven't done anything yet. Uh, take a look at some of the other videos that are out there on YouTube. So we're going to set up our ID, so that's our index. We're going to do an integer and we're going to go with three uh, integer spaces long. Uh, default, we don't really care, and attributes, we want this, whoops, index, we want it to be primary, and then AI is auto increment and we definitely need that. Every time we need, if we add a record to our database or to our table, we want this number to increase. So it's going to start off at 1 and it's going to increase as we go through. Um, we're going to do first name or I'll do F name, short for first name. Uh, we're going to do a variable character and we're going to do 100 characters long. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for L name, variable character and 100 characters long. I don't think anybody will ever have a name that is that long but I just want to make sure there's enough room there. Uh, so then we have first name, last name, we're going to add an email and we're going to use variable character and do 100 for that as well. Phone, we're going to do a variable character and we're going to do 11 spaces or 12 spaces. I'll do 15 just, just in case. And then we have one more space for, oh, let, let's just do website. And we will do a variable character and we'll do 225. Uh, we'll do, yeah, 225 for the character length. I don't think anybody will ever use that many, but you never know. So we are going to now save this. and our table is now created. So if we click on browse, there's going to be nothing there. We haven't added anything to our database. Let's do that now. We'll just use the insert function here. And we're not going to insert an ID. We're going to leave that empty. We're going to do F name. I'm going to do mine, Nicholas, last name Hewitt, email Nicholas at HewittMediaDesigns.net and phone I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, 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 five. And then our website, we're going to do my website. Okay. Now we click on go, and that should insert our information for us. Now, if we click on browse, we get our user information there. I'm going to add another one in. Whoops, I don't want import, I want insert. First name John Doe. Email jdoe at gmail.com. One, two, three, four, 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 four. And website, we'll just do HTTP.
we'll do google.com. Okay, so now we click on go, and we should have two users in our table now. Um, what we want to do is we want to create a page that'll just pull all of these users out of the out of the uh, database and display them in a nicely formatted table for us. Uh, so we go back over to Aptana, and the first thing we have to do is we need to set up a MySQL connection. So I'm going to do con variable, and we use MySQL underscore connect, and we use our server. We're just going to do localhost since that's where my database uh, resides, and I'm using it as the root user, no password, and that is it. Now we have to set our database. What database are we going to be using? Um, for us, it's PHP underscore basic, so we're going to use MySQL, select DB, and we are going to give it PHP underscore basic as our database name. So we have all of our connection information already set up. It's really that simple. Now we want to start making some calls against the database. So we create our query, and we're going to set our query equal to select everything from the table name, which is users. Now we're going to get a result set back from MySQL underscore query, and then we're passing in our query statement. So now we have all of our information in a an ob or in a, in a collection for us, but we can't use it. We have to break it up into pieces. So what we can do, and I'm actually going to echo out table. And I'm going to do the same thing here, and I'm going to close my tables, just so that way I can have my table already set up. And I just echo out the information. So while row is equal to MySQL underscore fetch array, so we're just going to get the information back as an array, and all these fields, so I'm going to have ID, F name, L name, email, all that stuff. Uh, all that stuff will be in that array for us. Um, I'm actually going to switch that over to associative array, just so that way we can call the information based on the name rather than calling it by position. Um, we would have to use 0, 1, 2 to figure out the spot where the information resides in our uh, results. So we're going to pass in our results. And we are going to echo table row, table data cell, and we are going to do concatenate row, and we're going to pull out F name give it a little space, concatenate, whoops, dollar sign row, L name. And we need to concatenate our closing TD and our closing table row. So now if I save this and go back over to my page, And if I refresh, whoops, then I get Nicholas Hewitt and John Doe. Um, I'm going to put a border around this table, just so that way we can see our table there. And I'm going to continue with our data. So I am going to put this on a new line. So my closing table row item is going to be on a new line, and I am going to put in a new table data cell. And inside of this, I am going to put row, and I am going to get the phone number. And I'm going to do the same thing for the email. Or no, I apologize for the website.
All right, so now let's refresh this and we should get all that information for us. I'm going to modify our website and I'm actually going to anchor, create anchors for that. So I am going to use the href and I'm going to pass in a row website and that's going to be the URL that it's going to. And then I'm also going to close this off and I will have the web address as the text as well. And I got to end my anchor. So now both of these are now linked. So if I click on this, I'll go to Google. If I go back, if I go to this link, which please forgive me, web, my website looks like hell right now. <laughs> it goes to my website and that's enough of my website. Uh, like I said, I'm in the process of rebuilding it and I want to really build a good community around uh, my YouTube videos and some blogs that I've been doing. Uh, so that is in the works and should be coming up within the next month or so. Um, but we'll continue with our uh, adding our email as well. So we're going to add an anchor tag around our name. A href href is equal to and we are going to pass in dollar sign row email but we're going to have the mail to piece as well and this will create the mail to link so now if the person cr uh, clicks on this anchor tag then now they're going to get a mail to link so now I got to end my anchor tag and my name now becomes the anchor. Whoops. And I have, oh, I forgot my period here for concatenation. All right, there we go. So now I have two mail to links that will send information or that will open my email clients. Uh, so that is the basics of working with databases. You create your connection, you pass in your web server, your username, and your password, which I don't have one right now, not a big deal. Uh, and then MySQL, you, you pass in your database that you want to use. And then you create your query. And you select all everything from users. And uh, we get a result set back from MySQL query. And from that result set, we have to pull each individual row out of that result set. And that is what MySQL fetch ASOC does. So there's a MySQL fetch ASOC, there's MySQL fetch array, which will just do uh, pull out an array and you have to target things uh, by 0, 1, 2, by the location in the array. Makes it a little difficult to deal with, um, so I try and avoid that. Or one that I have been using quite a bit lately is MySQL fetch object. Um, and that's really more for, uh, it creates an object out of the data and I'm not going to cover uh, working with objects right now. Uh, I'm going to do another series on object-oriented programming. So stay tuned for that once uh, that comes out. So that is it for working with databases. Uh, the next step that I'm going to take is actually putting a full-fledged application together. Um, it's really going to be a contact management system, and it's going to be really simple. So. Uh, well, I say really simple. It's going to be really stripped down. It's going to be the bare bones, but it's going to cover a lot of the, the features that um, that we've covered, or a lot of the concepts that we've covered in these videos. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and uh, check that out once, there, once that's up.